new technologies tend to be really magical when they first appear. I think that's a really good moment in time to kind of give it meaning and purpose and attach stories to it and make it mean something and not just be a gimmick. And so it's very important what kind of conversations we have about renewable energy and electric vehicles and driverless cars where we can really make these things a symbol of a future we really want to achieve. It's nice to know that as we go into this beautiful natural environment of the Canadian Rockies, the, the other pollutants that are inherent to uh, conventional vehicles isn't there. and You feel cleaner. One of the things I'm really interested in is are we able to go back and take existing cars and, and start thinking about how to install electric motors into existing cars and will there be an industry built around the idea that otherwise all these you know, gas carrier cars are still on the road and, and will we be able to have that choice and not walk away from the vehicle that we may already love and own. So. Yeah, and in a way, kind of retrofitting our infrastructure for self-driving cars or retrofitting gasoline-powered cars for electric drive trains is kind of, is, is a little bit hackish, right? But it's the only way we can do it because we cannot just like flip the switch and be in a utopia on roads which were designed for self-driving cars and be all electric. Self-driving, I think, is, is such a fascinating thing. And I imagine a future where, because self-driving makes vehicles inherently safer, it also may mean that so many of the vehicles we see on the road today are, are overbuilt for this concern of safety. And they're, you know, they're bulky and they're heavy and they effectively are not fuel efficient as a result. But as we move to safer cars based on self-driving technology, it means Cars can be lighter and thinner and can have different shapes and take on, you know, they can become the meeting instead of just a way to get to a meeting and it's an experience. You know, I think of the train actually the way I'm starting to think about the future of driverless cars. You get on the train, you can work, you get on the train, you can read, you get on the train, you can have a conversation. Smart technology is going to allow vehicles, presumably before we go all the way to driverless, to force us to be safer to make those choices for us with some sort of infrastructure connected into the road that says there's fog, that says it's icy, and just automatically slows our vehicles down. And I love that idea. It's like the GPS which you cannot operate if you're going at a certain speed. It just prevents you from being dumb. Right. And so I love to have a vehicle which will stop when there's something in front of it. I also imagine that there's going to be mechanisms in cars which kind of enhance our senses, which will allow us to see further, or there are already cars we see at night. I think the kind of the gorilla in the room is, is that electric vehicles still need energy, you know, they still need to be charged and that energy needs to come from somewhere and um, with current battery technologies there needs to be quite a few points to, to refuel these cars. Well and where, where that energy comes from actually determines what the ultimate foot carbon footprint of that vehicle is. If it's not from a clean source obviously it's not truly a a clean solution. So, so much of our infrastructure exists in a format that means that we we are never going to have a single solution for at least a century, unless it's a huge leap in technology. I agree. It's it's this long-term view which will really bring change. So, cities, governments, regulators, and manufacturers have to really commit. This is not about getting a new product out now. This is about planning this future, which might as well be 20, 30 years away.